This is lecture number 39 in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about maintaining fiber optic cable plants. Here at FOA, when we talk about, quote, maintaining a fiber optic cable plant, we mean keeping it reliable. And that involves building the network properly, then putting everything behind lock panels and only allowing access to trained personnel. Basically, connect up the system and don't touch it unless you have to. Some people think fiber optic networks need periodic maintenance, like their cars. But fiber optic networks are not like cars. They have no moving parts. They don't need periodic maintenance, like mechanical things, because they don't wear out. The problems with operation of a fiber optic network are generally due to damage to the cable plant or problems with the electronics. Most network equipment today monitors itself. Many transceivers have power and or bit error rate monitors to find errors or problems in the link. Software monitoring the network can indicate problem links. What you could th should think more about is the restoration and repair, not the maintenance. And by the way, on those racks of patch panels, the signs say, caution, caution, live traffic. Inspection during operation can be bad. Inspecting and cleaning connectors requires shutting down a link. Checking loss or transceiver power also requires shutting down a link. And testing spare fibers gives little useful information. For those times when you do need to do work on a network that's still alive, it's often done very late at night after hours when traffic is light. What you should do is design and build your links with reliability in mind. Think about reliability when you're installing cables or splicing and terminating the cables. When you're inspecting the systems and testing and documenting, which is the most important part of the process. And of course, prepare for the worst, because if you ever have to do a restoration, you need to be prepared. During cable installation, you need to consider the routing of the cable and make sure the cables are installed properly. Underground cables should be buried deep enough to prevent dig ups. In some countries, they're required to be buried as deep as one and a half meters and the locations of all cables and conduits should be marked carefully. Use bright colored ducts so like when a backhoe starts digging it up, there's a chance they may see it and stop before they break it. Install aerial cables under proper stress limits, considering of course the environment. And if, for example, the cable might be covered with ice at some point. Observe all limits on pulling tension and bend radius. Protect your cables, both now and long term. When splicing, it's important to very carefully do the splices correctly, check them, and then dress the splice closures properly. Make sure that all of the fibers and all of the buffer tubes inside the closure follow normal bend radius requirements and are carefully positioned so that opening and closing the closure will not damage the cables. Ensure splice closures are sealed. Pressure test them. Water in splice closures is one of the biggest problems of unreliability. And if you think some of the cables or fibers in the closure may have bend radius problems, check them with a VFL or an OTDR to see if there's higher loss that indicates a problem.
You should place connectors and splices in enclosures that can be locked and restricted to authorized personnel. Remember that earlier slide with the racks that say caution, caution, live traffic? Another thing is to make sure indoor closures are dustproof. Dust is a problem indoors, just like moisture is a problem outdoors in most environments. So make sure the closures that you use and the patch panels and the boxes and the racks are all sealed to prevent dust from entering. One of the best signs of a cable plant that's likely to be reliable is you can look at it and see it was installed in a neat and workmanlike manner, uh, not like the one shown in the picture. The way the cable plant looks is a big indication of the care taken in the installation and is the best indicator of the future reliability of the network. Dirt on connectors is one of the biggest problems in fiber optics. Connectors should all be, always be inspected and cleaned before connecting, either to other connectors or to active equipment. You can watch the uh, FOA videos on YouTube about cleaning and inspecting. When you do cleaning and inspecting, you may have to do it several times until you get a perfectly clean in face on the connector. You need to clean both connectors and mating adapters. If you're working on a patch panel with a connector inside an adapter behind the panel, you can get special cleaning facilities to go into those adapters and clean them. And likewise, clean transceiver ports. Remember, dust is your number one enemy. After a complete system is installed, the cable plant should be fully tested and the loss measured should be checked against the loss budget for that link that was developed during the design phase. An insertion loss test set will give you the loss of the link and OTDRs and visual fault locators can be used to find problems. You want to find and fix high loss components, components with high reflection, or loss due to bending or other stress, because all of those can be indicators of future problems in reliability. We cannot emphasize enough the value of documentation. You should keep records for your troubleshooting where the cable is run, the location of splices and terminations, the kinds of components used in case you have to get more to replace it. The loss in OTDR data will tell you what the loss was when it was installed and can be used for comparing to data when you're trying to find a problem. Keep the documentation, keep it up to date, Make sure the right people have copies of it and know what it means. And of course, the astute network owner prepares for the worst case. We all know accidents happen. Good markings, particularly on things like underground cables, can help prevent problems. Or like the cables in the pictures, which are not very deep enough Shortcutting on the depth of buried cable will almost always lead to potential problems. If you do have a problem, you have your documentation, you, have, you know what the components are, or you can have components already stocked for replacement, and you need trained personnel. And with those three factors, you can restore a network relatively quickly. So that's what we recommend for maintaining fiber optic networks. Build it properly, put everything behind locked panels, 
and only allow access by trained personnel, then connect up the system and use it. Let the network monitoring electronics tell you how it's operating, but don't touch it unless you have to. The FOA has lots of online technical information, which will help you design, install, operate, and restore fiber optic networks. There's the FOA guide with about a thousand pages of technical data, FiberU with free online self-study training, and of course our YouTube channel that you're on now. You can use the FOA website for all the technical information and, like many other people do, email us with questions. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the international nonprofit professional society of fiber optics. We're chartered to promote professionalism in fiber optics through education, certification, and standards.